Welcome into another episode of Steelers Afternoon Drive. I'm Zachary Smith. That's that's not Alan Saunders. That's no. Nick Faribault, also in Indy for the NFL Draft Combine. Nick, what's going on? A lot's going on, Smitty. Um, electric first 36 hours here in Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. If I don't say Just so myself. Marius Mims. A Marius Mims. It was very <laughs> electric last night, a Marius Mims. Um, no notes, just a Mary Smith. Um, that's yep. it. That's it. Just a Mary mm-hmm. Smith. Um, so no other notes, just a Mary Smith. Just know that. Um, but I'm telling you, dude, it's been a, it's been good. Um, always like coming out to Indy. It's it's nice to connect with people, learn some stuff. You hear you know the league buzz um, around here pretty well. Um, it's mm-hmm. not too hard to put put a pulse on kind of what's going on. So. It's all been good. Um, obviously, at the pre the preemptive stages, but talk GMs and coaches today. So it was all good. Uh, no Omar yeah. today, though. Um, yeah. Prez up to his family. Um, he had a, a loss mm-hmm. in the family, um, but has postponed his availability. We don't know if we're going to get any Steelers rep this week. You know, that's what I was going to ask. Like, I was going to say, do you think like maybe Andy Weidel steps in his place or like, like, don't, don't from what I've heard, I don't expect Andy to talk to us this week. I imagine Omar will talk to us either. Maybe if he comes later in the week or uh, maybe my guess is we get back to Pittsburgh, you know, sometime before free agency and we talk to him on the South side or something like that. Sure. Yeah, that would make sense. Uh, Nick, we're going to talk about some combine stuff, of course, and some other quarterback news that's kind of trickled down here. But where I want to start just shortly before we started recording, uh, an Arthur Smith favorite is set to hit free agency. Johnny Smith coming off a 50 catch season in Arthur Smith's offense is going to hit free agency after being released by the Atlanta Falcons. And, um, you know, I think it's worth having a conversation about just because of, you know, the production that he had within that offense, the target share that he had within that offense, despite, you know, Kyle Pitts playing that same position, somebody they invested very high draft capital in. But then you start thinking about like, okay, look at the Steelers roster. You got Pat Fryermuth, you got Darnell Washington, you got Connor Hayward in that room. And I know that those guys, very different players up and down that depth chart. So does Johnny Smith make sense even given the players that are already there for the Steelers at that position? I mean, maybe. He's a guy that knows the system very, very well. He's played, what, three seasons under Arthur Smith, 2019, 2020, and last Jeez. year. Um, yeah. Had the best year of his career last year statistically. Um, it was the most productive of his career. 28 years old, um, you know, like big, big time play threat, like up the seam, good athlete. Like he's a pretty good receiver. He's a pretty good player. Like I, I really like Johnny Smith generally. It's just tight end is very log jammed, but it's not log jammed by like elite players. Like Muth is good on an expiring contract though, right? Are they going to resign Muth? Darnell, really good blocking tight end. We'll see. Connor Hayward, really good kind of backup reserve guy. Is he going to be used more in the fullback role? Who knows? And then you got Hot Rod back there. Um, so, mm. I mean, yeah. it's not like a huge need, but, like, if John o. Smith wants to come for, like, you know, cheaper and is willing to come to reunite with Arthur Smith, like, to me it's hard to turn down a good football player, just adding a good football player to your team. Like, John o. Smith is a good football player. You know, we're not talking about a guy that's over the hill and washed. We're talking about a guy off the most productive year of his career. It's a very good locker room presence. Can give them a real big target, um, honestly, that can block. He can be kind of that, you know, receiver that can block out there if you really want him to. He's a pretty solid fit for the offense, obviously. And so I, I view it as honestly not a bad fit, not a bad move. Um, I understand that, listen, you're not going to pay this guy – you know, one year, 10 mil. Like, that's not always going to command yeah, either. But, like, right. you're not going to command him top of the market money compared. There's probably going to be teams that are going to offer more money. Like, I, I would, mm-hmm. would imagine that. But, like, if you're the Steelers, I think you'd be fools not to at least offer him one because if you get a good football player that wants to join your team, they can help your offensive weapon weaponry. Like, I think you kind of have to at least explore it. Yeah, and I mentioned, you know, the other dynamics in that room. Like, you got Fryermuth, who, you know, I, I appreciate the blocking effort, especially in the, like once he came back from injury last year. I thought he looked much better as a blocker. You had Darnell, who, you know, we didn't see him do much of anything as a receiver last year, so the complete opposite. And then, you know, what is Connor Hayward? Like, he's just kind of a do-it-all thing. And with how much Arthur Smith loves to run 12, 13 personnel, like, I, I do still think that, like, not necessarily the need is there, but, like, there is a role there if they do bring him in. There is. I mean, he's a vertical threat tight end. He's 
very explosive for the position. Um, he is a guy that has ascended every single year he's been in the Arthur Smith offense. Like, it is clearly a productive marriage. He's gotten over 400 yards every year, had over 500 last year with all the weapons that they had around him. Like, he is legitimately mm -hmm. a guy that has just done better with Arthur Smith. He's never been a great blocker. That's never really been his thing. But, I mean, we're talking, you know, 50 receptions or 582 and three touchdowns. Like, it's pretty solid, um, all yeah. things considered. So, I mean, I don't know how you – Especially in that. that passing offense, yeah. Yeah, and, and listen, like, he's a pretty interesting player in terms of actually – blocking like he has grown in that area again he's not like an elite blocker like he's never going to be an elite run blocker but he's mm -hmm. he can, if you put him on like bodies like you get him out there in the reduced split put him and almost act him like a you know a z receiver like the condensed guy like he can do that he has done that he fits in the offense pretty interestingly and it gives you another one-two punch with moose and and washington and you can do different things with him um, so I, I like John who's, and I like John who's influence. I also think it's nice to have someone in the offense that knows the offense to help the other guys there. Um, you probably talked about, you know, I'm sure the quarterbacks, obviously Tannehill and all those guys, but you know, mm -hmm. John who Mac Hollins, guys like that, that can just help the skill guys kind of assimilate into the new offense can always help. So I think John who has value again, I'm not breaking the bank for him. They don't need a tight end. Like if they don't add a tight end, they're fine. Um, they have yeah. four really solid tight ends, but John who wants to come and he's not super expensive. He's not going to cost a lot against the cap. Like, why would you not sign? Sure. And I think the other guy I'm throwing in there, uh, just because I think this offense needs a fullback. Keith Smith is also a free agent uh, who was Atlanta's fullback. So could definitely see that making sense as well. Throwing the ball to John U. Smith is going to be a, a different story that we can <laughs> kind of pivot to. Now we've talked so much about quarterbacks. It's like almost tiresome, but, I mean, when there's something to talk about, you got to talk about it. So, uh, Nick, I, I, first off, that that tweet I found funny. I saw that we both had quoted it. Mm -hmm. um, I actually want to pull it up right now just to bring up on here. Not that I want to give this any credence, but we both uh, quoted it like simultaneously. Rumor alert, the Steelers have offered the Bears their round two pick, 51 overall, as well as some additional later round picks. Yes, plural, for Justin Fields. However, the Bears currently want the Steelers' first-round pick, number 20 overall in return. Deontay Johnson is also a name that has been brought up in talks. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, that has all yeah. definitely been the case. Very, very, <laughs> very real. Very real from at NFL Notify, rumor mm -hmm. alert, and it's yeah. source, I made it up. Um, that's, <laughs> this, this is what that is. The, these Justin Fields rumors are insane. Like, Yeah. I want to... I want your take on in terms of like the value that it think it will be though, because like I've also seen other accounts, more credible accounts posting about teams, you know, you gotta be weary of bidding against yourself. Like how many teams are actually in play here for Justin Fields? You know, you, you think if the Steelers are okay, Atlanta certainly makes sense. The Raiders, although that one's interesting just because like Luke Getze, the offensive coordinator he just had last year is the offensive coordinator in Vegas is their interest in those two continuing to work together. Uh, and then beyond that, you have like the teams that are likely to take a quarterback at the top of the draft. Like what is the market for Justin Fields? I do kind of like have questions on how many teams have him as like their one a, um, I'm sure he's like part of the plan. Like, okay, maybe we don't get Kirk cousins. Like we'll get Justin Fields. Like that might be what Atlanta stance is. So it Ryan polls today um, talked and said that, they want to trade him before free agency if they trade him. Like, mm -hmm. I think that's going to be tough to do and get like good compensation. You could do that for probably like you want to get a third or a fourth or a third and a fourth or something. I think you could do it. But if you're the Bears and you're sitting there and you're like, we want a second, I think you're going to have to wait. And that's not doing right by Justin Fields, really, because you're stringing it out. You're leaving him in the gray area, you're leaving him in the question. Like, where's he going? What's he doing? And more importantly, the longer it strings out, the less jobs are open for him. So, like, you trade before mm -hmm. free agency. Wherever he goes, he's the starter. He's, like, going to get the job. So, by stringing him along, you're really doing him a disservice there if you're looking at the I want to do right by him model. And, and Ryan Poole said that. So, I'm going to take him for right. his word. I'm going to take him for his word that he wants to do right by Justin Fields. So, 
you got to trade him for free agency. I think you lose a lot of leverage by doing that. I just, I think you could maybe get yeah. a second, you know, I think waiting until the NFL draft, like during the NFL draft. All right. There goes Williams, May, Daniels, McCarthy. And then I don't know, let's just say the Broncos are sitting there and all they have is Jared Stidham. And they're like, we need a quarterback this year. Like we don't have a quarterback. And Justin Fields, like, yeah, that's just the desperation is going to kick in later down the line. Yeah, that's just something like the Falcons can't move up for one of the top three. They don't like McCarthy. All right, Justin Fields will trade in second. Like, I think that's mm-hmm. where they would make, get that second. If they're going to trade before free agency. I think he might go for a third. And I don't think as many teams are going to be jumping for him. They might throw their, you know, offer out, but it's going to be a little depreciated. And so a team like the Steelers, for example, who quite honestly, I don't think has very much interest in any of the very top quarterbacks in this 2024 class. Uh, that's the top four guys I'm talking about. Nick's, Penix, whatever, probably are, are in place somewhat. Um, but mm-hmm. we're, you know, they're not going to get McCarthy. They're not trying to trade for Jaden Daniels. They're not trying to Drake Mayfalls. They're probably not trying to do that. Um, that could be a team that actually does look at it. But – could they get it at like a third or fourth round pick? I think that's the question there. Fields is just a very weird situation. It's a unique situation. You don't see third year quarterbacks like this very often on the market that are this talented and have that upside. Like it's pretty rare. So he's probably worth the swing, but the Bears trading him quickly probably loses them leverage. And again, the market will be there. Probably a few teams will be there. I'm just not sure any team's going to want to actually give up the second round pick if you're trading him that quick. Yeah, and I agree, but it's like it's already out there now. Like Ryan Pools, we heard him say that he wants to, if it, if he's going to be moved, it's going to be before free agency to do right by Justin Fields. I don't think that you can reverse course on that now. Like I, that's going to look really bad on him, and then all of a sudden you're talking about just like, I I, I don't know. I don't want to like you know tarnish his reputation or anything like that, but just like you know in future situations with players and stuff and agents, like that's not a good look. You know if you're setting that precedent if they don't now trade Justin Fields before free agency. Yeah, I agree. I I don't think you want to do that to Justin Fields. Like the whole point of having Justin Fields and and having the send off is like maintaining cordial relations by putting the guy like Justin Fields is really liked in that Bears locker. I think like, this is the part of this, like those players don't always see the long-term value in, you know, trading fields and getting Gale. Like that's not Mm -hmm. always what they see. So you want to do right by the guy they like because it keeps that locker room in high morale. Without that, though, I mean, you know, you're risking some some bad locker room mojo. Like there, there's yeah. a lot of drawbacks there. So yeah, I mean, if they want to do right by Caleb, I mean, I mean Justin, um, you know, we're talking probably about maybe they get a late second, like maybe, um, you know, maybe yeah. we're talking about a team that doesn't have a starting job open right away, but has an older quarterback that's willing to trade a second. I don't know, like the Rams maybe with Stafford or like we're willing to trade you a second to get Justin Fields or something, or maybe I, I don't think the Steelers are willing to give him a second. I don't, I don't see that happening. Um, yeah. I think for a third, we could start having that serious discussion, but um, mm-hmm. I don't see it for a, a second. So I don't know. I think they're in a tough spot. Yeah. They're, they're, okay. There's your daily Justin Fields talk on Steelers Afternoon Drive, and we can move on from there. Nick, as we are recording, very interesting piece of information dropping down here it comes from Jeremy Fowler. Uh, Chiefs have informed Legereus Sneed they are prepared to use the franchise tag and are open to consummate a trade off if no long term de- if long term deal is reached. Per source, Sneed is agreeable to the scenario, giving him a chance to talk with other teams while KC remains in play. This is a very interesting scenario don't you think i mean how often do you see a team be like at least this seemingly mutual between the team and player to go about business this way um but legerius sneed you know a guy i think we both had circled like this would be a guy for the steelers to you know get very aggressive for like we're talking about uh getting very aggressive at quarterback but like we've both pounded the table for this being the guy to get aggressive for should he hit the open market. Do you still feel that way with this being the scenario if there has to be trade compensation going the other way? Yeah, it's different. Um, first of all, how much is he going to command on the trade? Um, mm-hmm. Do you think he gets a first? Do you think it's a second? 
Um, Jalen Johnson this past year was, you know, teams were willing to give up the third and weren't willing to give up the second, um, depending on where you view Snead at there. Um, mm-hmm. It's somewhere along that line, probably a second at least, I would imagine, would yeah. be here. But, again, you have to give him a big contract, so <coughs> there might be a tax with that. And Snead, as good as he is, he's, you know, the, the big, you know, trade for a big-time corner in recent years that you can use as comparison is Jalen Ramsey. But uh, I think we would both agree Snead is not on that level um, to where Ramsey was when he was traded to, like, L.A., for example, mm-hmm. um, where they give two first. Um, so – I am interested to see what the compensation is. I'm willing to pay the money to get Jerry Steed. If it's a second, I think I'm in on it. Um, I definitely would be actually. I think that's a really, really good trade. If it's a second and some change, I think I'm in on it too. Um, Like, again, you're not getting a corner better in the second round um, than him. You're just not. Um, He is a special fit for the Steelers too where it is perfect. It is perfect. And he's young. He has upside for long-term value. Um, I like it. So I think the Steelers should definitely be calling this. Um, I think they should be exploring the, the trade option for LeJarrius Snead. If you were willing to trade for Jalen Johnson earlier at the trade deadline, I feel like you should be similarly interested in trading for Jerry Snead here um, in this scenario. So, yeah, I, I would, I'm in on this, Smitty. I, I think even in the trade scenario, I think I'm in on it. Yeah, it, it does complicate it a little bit, but I agree. Um, you know, it just the trickle down effect of this is how do you uh, obviously you're losing a draft pick here, but you don't have to draft a corner now, at least that early. Um, maybe they could double dip at some point. But like to me, if I was again, this is and I don't know if you were viewing it the same way with the draft, but like perfect scenario. I'm not saying it would 100 percent play out like this, but you get you know, somebody that can start early at tackle. They obviously need a center. Like you can't check all the boxes, but now you're losing one of those two probably with giving up a second round pick. So like, how does that change maybe their approach if they have to give up a two to get Legereus need? If they have to get a, give up a two, I mean, plus the cap space that they will expend upon getting him. If they Mm do, I mean, you have at that point knocked cornerback down the peg a lot. Um, so, in my opinion, first round, you don't want to, like, box yourself into, you know, one position, but it's hard not for that pick to be a, a tackle or set at that point. Like, it really is. Like, yeah. it probably has to be offensive line. And at that point, when you don't have the second, because basically Steed would be a draft pick and a free agency addition. He's both. So, you are losing an asset by gaining mm-hmm. Steed. Um, but what – I would do at that point is that's when you look at free agency and look at uh, Aaron Brewer, Lloyd Cushenberry, um, Andre James at center. Um, at tackle, I think there's less obvious fits um, there. But yeah. like, I'd probably be looking at center to fill probably in free agency at that point because you're in a tough spot. But maybe this is the other idea. You know, you talked about when – Maybe you trade 51 for Fields, right? Well, you trade 51 for Sneed. Maybe you trade out of 20 and you get extra picks. Uh, yeah, and yeah. you move back and then you're sitting, I don't know, like let's just say 28, 29. And that's probably a comfortable range where you take Zach Frazier or you take, um, you know, Tyler Guyton or you take someone like that. So um, that's kind of how it would change. And then at that point, you know, you're, you're able to kind of – do different things. I think that would put a, a trade back scenario probably higher up on the list, uh, personally, depending on who is at 20. If they stay at 20, I almost feel like it has to be, you know, Jackson Powers Johnson, Amarius Mims, JC Latham, Taliese Fuaga, someone like that. That's that's what I would say. Uh, Nick, the last thing I want to talk about is obviously, you know, the combine not started yet in terms of the drills. Uh, we're still going to start to hear people talking, though. Uh, you got linebackers and edge, you said, tomorrow, right? So I think it'd be interesting to maybe talk about some of the guys that you are interested in seeing if any of them are like Steelers fits. Funny enough, I actually just watched Peyton Wilson today, put out a little thing on about him on Twitter. I absolutely love him. Just such a unique player in terms of the size speed combo that he is. Uh, there's not really like a blueprint for a player like that at his position, but uh, whether it's him or like a Cedric Gray, Edron Cooper, those have been a couple of the names mentioned. Uh, who are you most excited to watch amongst that group? And uh, who do you think best fits the Steelers if they were to dip into that? Most excited to watch this week, Junior Colson. 
That's who I'm most. There we go. Watch. Kid from Michigan, man. Yeah. We're, we're talking to me about the best linebacker in this class. I love what Junior Ooh, Colson is. Okay. I think he's linebacker one, man. He is a bulldog. Like this guy, he's a little undersized, but he plays bigger. Like he might measure in. I mean, he is listed on the. Let me see what he's listed at on the Michigan website. But you look at his tape and like, <laughs> he is not yeah. pop out as like. No. A super huge guy. Like he's six three two forty seven, but like he's probably more like six four. Like, yeah, you know, I was just say like when I was watching Mike Sanders still, I didn't think Junior Colson was that big. Yeah, he's probably like six yeah. one. Um, so not super small. Like we're not talking like Devin Bush where he's like five eleven. Um, but we are yeah. talking about a guy that probably a little smaller than he was, but he's a bulldog. I mean, he has got great yeah. eyes. Um, he has fantastic sideline sideline range. Like he is really, really solid. So I'm excited to see kind of where. He looks at. I, I think he'll look really good in the drills. Look really good in coverage. Um, I really, really like him. Great athlete. Uh, can strike and shed. Good blitzer. He's got a lot of different things working for him. I look at Peyton Wilson that I'm really excited to see. You talked about how you watched him. Tapes real good. Great athlete. Good, good coverage linebacker. Good size, but medical. We'll see how they kind of check. Six, out, right? six season-ending injuries going back to high school. I know. Crazy. Crazy how many season injuries he's had, but he's a good player when he's out there. I mean, we're, yeah. we're talking about that. I mean, some of these off ball linebackers are interesting. You know, Edron Cooper's really good. He had a great year. I'm a little um, tense about the leap he took this year because it was really out of nowhere. Like the 22 tape is tough. It's tough. The 23 tape is great. So yeah. um, I like that. Um, it looks like he's kind of reworked his body. He looks good. He's much more athletic in coverage. He took a big time step up. I'm excited to see where he tests. I, I'm, I'm interested to see that. Um, Trevin Wallace. I like Trevin Wallace out of Kentucky. Um, he's a nice player. Um, I thought he was probably the more underrated guy at the Senior Bowl. Like he had a really good week at the Senior Bowl, and, and so I'm interested to see how he looks. Um, and, and then I also am excited to see what Cedric Gray looks like. I like Cedric Gray. He's just such a smart player. Does little things right. So. These off-ball linebackers, you know, it's not a great class. There's only about five or six of them I really like, and I basically aim to hold them. Um, but yeah. you well, know, that's what it, I was going to bring up is because I, I don't know if you're in agreement, but there's not any like even you like Junior Colson the most. But would you take him in the first round? Because like to me, I think I think there's like you know a handful of them that I really like as day two players. Certainly not any that I'm spending a day one pick on. But I think most of them fall within like top forty to like eighty range for me. Yeah, I, I think most of them fall in that range, second round, third round range. And like day three, I mean, there's a few interesting sleepers like Easton Gibbs, I think is a pretty solid player out of Wyoming. I, some at the Shrine Bowl, I like his game. Um, but mm -hmm. there's not many. Like this is a really thin linebacker class. And even the linebackers yeah. I'm talking about that you can get at, you know, 51, for example, or would be picks uh, Jeremiah Trotter, for example, maybe in the third round. He's a thumper. Like they're very role specific guys. I don't think you're finding Fred Warner in this class. I, I don't. I don't see that guy. It's not a great class. Not great depth. If I were the Steelers in this class, I'd probably avoid it. Um, I know mm -hmm. they need a linebacker, and it would be nice I to get the same thing. I'd kick the tan for another year. Yeah. It, it, it's the the thing is though. We've said that for like the last three years. Just been bad, bad, bad. Like three straight, like pretty mediocre linebacker classes. Like right. it's I just I feel like we're not even having this this conversation if Cole doesn't get hurt last year and Quan doesn't get I know Quan was only on a one year deal, but I feel like if he doesn't get hurt, you could justify bringing him back in another one year deal. Really hard to do when you sign a guy to a one year deal and then he suffers a season and the injury. I just I don't think that we're having this conversation about even really like an interest in a long term solution until next year if those guys don't get hurt. I mean, if Cole doesn't – I mean, I don't know how Cole's knee injury is going to affect his athleticism and affect yeah. his game. Um, you know, he could be a completely different player. He was playing really well before he got hurt. Yeah. Elan Roberts is, is in the last year of his deal um, this year. I mean, it would be wonderful to have the young guy in there. So maybe mm -hmm. if the right value comes along, maybe you take a swing. They just, to me, one, have bigger needs to fill. I, I think it's easier to sign a linebacker and expect that guy to give you above replacement yeah. level play. The mm -hmm. absolute 
just black hole of linebacker play that the Steelers have received since Ryan Shazier was injured is legitimately yeah. one of the most incredible outliers in the NFL. And then when they, when they find, find it, it – It's like it's not hard to find good linebacker play, or at least no. – I don't say good linebacker play. Replacement level linebacker play. Baseline. We're getting below yeah. the line JV level linebacker play for a half decade. It didn't mm-hmm. matter what they did. They, but like last year, they seemed to find a really good mix, and then they two did. of the three finally, got hurt. Like, right. yeah, they finally did, and then everyone got hurt, and they had to make do with what they had. And I mean, I haven't even looked at the inside linebacker free agency class. I would imagine this might be a place. I mean, that they look. I mean, it would be smart. Are they opinion. gonna? Are they gonna uh, sign Devin White and take the other Devin from the 2019 class? Oh boy, Devin White's <laughs> tape is brutal. Yeah, um, uh, I mean, I don't know who they could sign. Josie Jewell, um, mm-hmm. I, uh, Denzel Perryman is like a solid, like older vet that could fill yeah. in for one year, be your thumper. Um, you know, like don't the go fact he like, made a Pro Bowl. Like I know that the Pro Bowl is whatever; it's a Pro Bowl. But like the fact that he made a Pro Bowl like two seasons uh, ago is wild. That sign Anthony Walker from the from the Browns, like just a really solid mm-hmm. linebacker. Like again, yeah. like. When the Steelers signed Quan and E Rob and Cole, no one was like, wow, these are superstars. Like, if you don't have superstars at linebacker, if you don't have Fred Warner, if you don't have Roquan Smith, if you don't have these aliens at linebacker, your best way to just play linebacker play is like getting three or four guys that just have solid plays, feed off each other well, fill each other's kind of bad spots. I think mm-hmm. that's what they should do. They should look to that. So, I mean, I like a guy I, – I like some of those guys I mentioned, like real solid players. Anthony Walker would be a nice sign. He's not going to cost a lot. He can give you really good, you know, base-level play. Um, and maybe what you would do is you sign a guy like Anthony Walker and then in training camp you you see how Quan's doing and maybe bring Quan in again and, and maybe you just kind of keep that going and have a nice rotation there. Hopefully Mark Rob takes another step. It seemed to – Finally, at the end of the year, he started to actually kind of come around. Maybe there's something there. Um, but, you know, inside linebacker, I've been seeing some people tout it as, like, the biggest need on the team. It's just not mm. important enough. Like, it's important, yeah. but, like, it's only super important when you have, like, game-changing elite players. Like, everyone pointed to, well, look at all of the top teams in the playoffs. They have – elite linebacker play there's like five linebackers that actually can cover fit the run and do all of that like a linebacker is a very hard position to play fred warner can do it roquan can do it you know the 49ers want to have two of them with drake greenlaw uh, before he got hurt so do the ravens with patrick queen like there are like only a few of these guys that can do what they do and so it's really hard to find those guys so don't be trying to you know, attain for elite level play in this class. If there was an elite linebacker, like an inside backer that might be there at 20, that's a different discussion. There's not going to be a guy there. So if they get the right value, you know, if Peyton Wilson's there in the third round, take it. I'm 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 up for that pick. Um Trevin Wallace in the third round, good pick. If Colson falls to 51, I think I'd think about that. Like there are value plays to where you can get really solid linebacker play. I just think that also I would rather go O line corner, you know, it, address those big spots. They're in terms of actually value, they're more important and harder to find a lot of these. It's a linebacker, you know, you should be able to find a guy that can give you solid level play, like they did last year with Holcomb, Alexander, and Roberts, uh, rather than breaking the bank. Um, they do need to find a solution there. I just I don't think it's as dire. I think as long as Cole mm-hmm. is back and you know, playing solid level ball. Uh, E-Rob had the best year of his career last year. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and then real quick, the last thing is the edge rushers as well. We don't expect necessarily the Steelers to be, you know, looking at edge guys, but is there somebody, maybe not even for the Steelers, but like you're just interested in seeing, or if there is like a guy on day three that you're like, the Steelers do need a fourth edge rusher, maybe they would do something like this. I mean, I guess they need a fourth edge rusher. I don't know. Maybe they just, yeah, you know, bring back, uh, Marcus bring Golden. back Marcus Golden. I mean, I could see yeah. that happening. Um, that they, there are a few solid, like day three edge rushers. 
Mo Camara out of um, Colorado State. I really liked him at the Shrine game. I thought he was really solid. Um, so I wouldn't mind him. I think, you know, day three edge rushers this year have some upside, but they're very raw, um, like rawer than usual. It's kind of interesting, actually. Yeah. Um, but like you look well, what's at also guys, interesting about that specifically is like record low uh, underclassmen declaring, you know, like NILs kind of change the draft and stuff. So maybe not as many like shallow draft pool. I feel like there's going to be a lot of people that don't have as many draftable grades as they typically do because of things like sure. that. Yeah. For sure, dude. For sure. I mean, there, there's like guys like Solomon Bird out of USC that has some interesting tape. Like, mm-hmm. there's a few guys. Xavier Thomas I thought was really cool out of Clemson. If you're going there, uh, he actually really had a great week of the Shrine game. Uh, I really want to see what he does here. Um, I think he's going to test really well. Um, so, like, there are some names out there. It's a fine edge class. Like, it doesn't knock my socks off. I mean, there's some nice players. I like Latu a lot. First is yeah. a really good player, but you know, Darius Robinson has some interesting things, but it's not like an elite edge class. It's a pretty average edge class. Um, the depth there, though, it does have some explosive, interesting guys that fit like a Steelers profile if they want mm-hmm. that. So, yeah, they can they can go in and, and get, get a guy that can fit that mold for sure. Well, there we have it. We will see how uh, the rest of this week plays out when we learn about not just the Steelers, but the buzz around the league. Uh, Nick will be there for all of it. Nick, tell the people where they can find you. Yeah, you can find me on X at Fairball FB, Twitter, whatever, call it Fairball FB. <laughs> Read stuff at Steelers now.com. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. You know what to do. There we go. Like Nick said, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell here. Hit us in the comments uh, with any questions, thoughts on the episode, anything that we touched on, anything you want to hear us touch on throughout the rest, rest of the week when Alan comes back. I'm Zachary Smith, PGH for Nick Fairball and myself. Thanks for jumping in. Take another ride on the Steelers afternoon drive. <laughs>